As always, we want to say thanks for making ZSportsLounge.com your place to go and the host of affiliates that resend this channel out, the military bases stationed all over the land. We have a chance to catch up with the champ herself, Jerry Seitz. How you doing? I'm doing really well. Doing really back to back to real life right now, but I'm doing really good. Thank you for having me on the show. You know, Jerry, I, I, we've read, I think, Sheer Dog had an article, MMA Match had an article. I believe Fox and CBS talked about it. You dominated this fight. Lacey definitely brought it to battle with you. But in the end, they had to call it quits in the third round, and uh, you were victorious. Uh, it was very complimentary. She, Lacey spoke about you in very high regards. But you are the Fist of Fury for a reason. Right. It was... Um one of the one of the best fights of the night tonight, in my opinion, and I'm not being biased at all. It was just an incredible match. We were going uh, all action the whole time, and she wasn't going to stop for anything. I wasn't going to stop for anything. Um, I ended up having a really good takedown ground defense, um, using my strikes and my ability. Uh, it's really strong. She had me in a guillotine the first round, and um, I just happened to, uh, after about 30 seconds or a minute, I got out of it. She was very strong. I have nothing but good things to say about her, and um, I'm just really honored because, um, you know, when, when it comes to good fights, it's like you're you're dancing with somebody, and, you know, you can only dance, catch the rhythm with certain people, and uh, we, had a, we had a great dance out there. It was um, very poetic. It was, uh, to me, it was, it, was, it was art out there fighting for, for um, the championship, and um, we really looked really good together, and she made me look good. I made her look good, and, um, you know, it's a win-win situation, and I'm just happy to come out on top and they really good. Um, brought the title home, the 120-pound title home to Springfield, Missouri. So I'm pretty excited. I'm pretty excited, and uh, got a got a good future looking ahead of me right now. So um, I'm just I'm just excited and grateful and. Um, by the whole experience. Well, I think what it did is cement you that you need to be on the main card for Strike Force's next telecast. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I hope so. I hope they think that. I think they're kind of kicking themselves in the butt for not televising that fight. But um, yeah, it was very hard to get bits and pieces of. But the bits and pieces we saw before they were pulled off of YouTube um, were pretty phenomenal. The way that you attacked and went to the ground game, it looked like Lacey was going in one direction and you were sort of countering it and anticipating that she studied video because you you, you came out a little different than you normally. Do I talk about that? Um, I didn't. I didn't really. I came out with the intention of of just doing what I do and staying aggressive and things like that. I waited just a little bit. I had, uh, you know, we had to sit out and back in ten minutes without warming up. So you know, it takes me a second to get warmed up and things like that. So um, I came out uh, getting ready just to throw down. The first thing she tried to do was shoot at me, and um, I stopped that. I was stuffing all of her shots almost all night. She got me down a couple of times, and. Um, and I have to have it, hand it to you, but I controlled the whole fight. I just felt really good about it. To my corner very well. Um, heard her corner shouting things out too. So I was just, I was just all over the place. I was able to listen to my corner, listen to her co corner, and you know, just little bits pieces like that also helped you out through your fight as well. Well, Jerry, you've always had the reputation of of being the very best at what you do, whether it's grappling, boxing, kickboxing or MMA, you're kind of the all-in-one package when you talk about no, your experiences. Everybody says, hey, that's phenomenal, but I think, you know, what the heck is wrong with that? I think it's kind of stupid. I do too much. I do way too much, I think, but uh, I have a great time in doing it, and I try to do everything I do. My mom always said, if you're going to do something, you better do it right or don't do it at all. So everything I try to do, I, I put my heart into it, and, and all my emotions and all my intelligence, just, you know, thankful that, you know, I get to come out on top, so... Well, absolutely, especially with that battle in the third round when she finally, I mean, how beaten was she? Because it, it, uh, every article said you were definitely unloading on her at one point in time, and she was definitely right. opening up but nicely. I, you know, every time I hit her, I mean, I even kicked her in the head, and I was just like, wow, this girl does not want to quit. And, um, you know, and having four rounds clubs and stuff like that, you're going to get knots. You're going to get uh, beaten up pretty bad, and, and she was, and and I don't think she would still would have quit or, or stayed down. She almost went down the last time I punched her, and that's when the referee um, um, jumped in and stopped it, which was a, a, a very, very good stoppage, I think, because she was pretty slow to get up, slow to respond, and things like that. So it was a good stoppage. But uh, she, you know, personally speaking, she, she wouldn't have stopped unless the referee stopped it. So she was, you know, trying with all her heart, and she was a class act, and she was um, uh, very respectful, and I was towards her, too, as well. So, um like well, I said, it's a win-win situation when, when you get to fight people like that because bad attitudes are the worst thing you can ever come across or, or, or you know, um, coming up with excuses and things like that. You know, it just it's not it's not good. It's not good either way. But she, she was awesome. Her corner was awesome. It was just a great fight. Well, when I think I, of you I'm and what say, you... You know, it's just a great fight. 
when I think of you when you're fighting, you had the opportunity to really answer that jump down and really do a beat down, and you did, and you showed a lot of poise, wondering if the referee was going to step in because you knew she was hurt. I remember the Ali fight when Ali had a chance to finish off Foreman, and he walked away as Foreman hit the ground. And then there's Andre Alofsky, where he just knocked out some guy. Instead of jumping on him and really pounding on it, he waited for the referee to come over because he knew the guy was out. That big Roy Nelson fight comes to mind. And I see class when I see that because a lot of these guys know they're hurting him, and they just jump on it and keep pounding and pounding. I don't think it does well for the sport. I think a lot of people, especially wrestling colleges, look at that, and they don't want to be equated with that. If they saw how you fought, Arlovsky fought, and remember the Ali fights, it's class because you know you hurt him. There's no need getting yourself in danger or really making it worse than it was. Right. Even even then, when you show um, that little bit of speck of mercy or, or knowledge and respect kind of thing, you have to be really careful, too, because you never know what's going to happen. They could always come back and right. try to kill you because, you know, they're going to try to do the same thing to you. So you really have to use, um, you really have to just kind of look at the person and, and really, really be aware in there a lot of times. And and, um, and I I felt like I was. Uh, the referee definitely was. And that's, that's what really mattered, you know, to me was the referee stopping it. So she's all right. I, you know, I pray for her and things like that. She's. I think she's going to be okay. And bruises uh, and stuff like that before too is a part of the job description. <laughs> you can't. You know, it is. It's definitely it's like you know, um, it's part of the job description. You have to take it sometimes. And the only thing you can have, got to order is some ice and some um, <laughs> maybe you know. Um, Ibuprofen for the headache. <laughs> Ibuprofen. Yeah, get the swollen and stuff down. You know. There's not much more you can do, but I was um, really thankful everything turned out okay and, and nobody was seriously hurt. Now, in your fight, I, have you had a chance to watch the video yourself yet? Uh, no, sorry, I sure haven't. Yeah, it's, well, most was, fighters I don't. I remember most of it. <laughs> well, what were elements that you saw that were sloppy that you're kind of, not the fact that she could take advantage or a fighter could take advantage of, but areas where you were going after it and you realized either a split second after, not even a split second, that, wow, you had an opportunity there, and then in the second round, you had an opportunity there. In the third round, obviously, you met your opportunities, but in the first two rounds, what were the items that really stuck out on your head that you're going to have to go back to the drawing board and see if you can perfect better? I would just like let my hands go a little bit more on that because my boxing really, really, really helps out in this. I think, and which which I could do that, but when you're dealing with MMA, you also have to be very aware of um, your distance and things like that. And my my distance is pretty good, my footwork is pretty good, but with this fight, I didn't use my footwork as much and circled around as much. I just kind of want to stay in the pocket and be able to stuff, um, you know, her shots and everything like that. So I would like to get a little bit better at that, um, at the the ground defense as well as keeping someone at bay with my hands and my feet. And um, that's that's pretty much my strength and also at the same time my weaknesses too so um i just like to get better all the way around that and uh, a little bit better maybe at submissions and um <laughs> i should did pretty good i almost subbed a sub artist so pretty happy about that but um nice. always i can always i can always be better you know I, I never think that i'm i'm the best or anything like that because i think you have to once you go there you have nowhere else to go but down and i think i'm so i'm still growing and I still getting stronger still getting better and making great adjustments and um i've still got a lot more to learn and i uh I'm motivated by that and um, just like to keep on going and keep doing well. So um, I'm lucky to have great instructors, my great trainers. You know, I've got Ike Stafford and Nate Warren helping me out in the ground game. One of the best boxing trainers, Terry Washington. I just, I don't know. I've uh, I just really, really like to have great instructors in my lifetime. And, um, and my other influences earlier than that, my, my Taekwondo instructors and things like that. I mean, everybody, I've learned so much from everybody and um, I don't know what I'd do without them. I would. I'd probably be working a real job, probably. <laughs> nine, to, nine to five. Now, what's in store for you at Strike Force coming up? What's your next fight date, date, date line? Is it going to be November or is it going to be February? Um, I am not sure about the dates or anything like that just yet. Right now, um, I'm just taking my mandatory week off and eating cake and um, <laughs> just relaxing, spend time with my family. I got a family reunion this weekend, so we'll, um, I'll keep you posted on that, but we don't know just yet. There's a lot of stuff, a lot of opportunities out there. A lot of stuff in the air, and I just got to talk to my team and, and see where I'm at and um, see which is the best route to take. But, uh, you know, sky's the limit right now. That's awesome. Hey, it's, it's Jer- awesome. Jerry yeah. Seitz, Fist of Fury. She just came off the big battle with Lacey Shookman, and she's got more in store, and I'm sure Spike, I'm sure Strike Force is kicking themselves in the pants <laughs> for not televising the best fight of the night. That's not me. That's the reporters and everybody who covered that match. Awesome. We are off the air. Oh, hey, hey.